Hello and welcome to my shop. I'm Ryan Gravlin. Today I'm going to show you how to build a flip top uh, station for your CNC or any machines that you want to use. The goal of this was for me to save space using my large Inventables X carve. I have the 1000 by 1000 millimeter X carve and I wanted to save space, add some versatility, storage and then utilize my media devices between my laptop and tv screens uh, i teamed up again with fox hall woodworks uh, to come up with this design uh, and be able to share with everybody so that if you decided you could as well uh, build one for yourself uh, we came up with the assembly uh, the main frame and structure based off the king james extreme assembly table over at king's fine woodworking I'll link the description in the box above. Um, I built his extreme assembly table and it had this design uh, which just makes an incredibly strong structure. So you can not only use this for a uh, CNC machine, um, you can also mount extremely heavy tools to it. So the actual um, table that it sits on is a torsion box so it will never move. We've uh, come up with some really good uh, holders for the gantry so that when it flips around on all three axes, there's no strain on the gantry itself. Uh, I've also mounted it with Inventables products as well. Everything that I've used will be linked in the descriptions. It is a lengthy build um, to some extent, but nothing overly complicated at all. Uh, everything will be detailed out for you. In addition to the um, monitors and my computers and all tying it in together and have power to the station, I wanted to utilize its footprint uh, as well to make sure I had a lot of storage. These lower cabinets are big enough for your dust extraction hoses, the actual mounting pipe, that we used is a steel pipe and I have a tunnel design inside the top here that makes it super easy to build. Now, comment, subscribe, like the video as well. Let us know how we're doing. Um, we put a lot of effort into the plans um, in this video. So um, any, any helpful tips or comments sure would be appreciated. We will have this in other sizes as, as well. Let's get started and uh, enjoy. All right, we're gonna start out by cutting sheets of plywood on the table saw. Because the sheets of plywood were so large, I had to store, cut them into more manageable sizes so that I could then uh, carry them easily and, and rip them down on my table saw. I then take them over to the chop saw and cut them down to their final lengths. I squared the left side first and then cut on the right. Now on to assembly. I used a piece of my uh, cutoffs and marked them on the end so that I knew where to stop the glue because you don't want to have glue inside the bridle joint used a right angle here so that I could line my pieces up. Use that same spacer uh, to line everything up so that uh, the distance would be equal on each side and I'd have a nice square bridle joint when I'm done. I used pin nails throughout just to temporarily hold it all together before I could get it into the clamps. All 
All right, now I'm here uh, cutting the angle brackets um, that I will laminate together. I'm being sure to make sure everything's nice and square. It's a lot less clean up later. All right, guys, I just got done laminating all the frame assembly all the way around for the bridle joints. Now I'm gonna uh, real quick laminate all the angle brackets and foot pads. And here I'm gluing them up like I did before with the uh, assembly. One thing to think about is make sure you don't drive pin nails through where you're gonna use your bandsaw. I did and ruined my bandsaw blade. I use a little jig here to keep all four sides nice and square. But you can mark your diagonal and keep the pin nails out of that area pretty easily if you think ahead. I just cut out the caster supports. Cut 12 of them, three times four all the way around the table. So I'm gonna do it just like I did with the angle brackets. I'm just gonna stack stack three up, pin nail it, and then I'll put them all in the clamp after I'm done. And as you can see here, uh, it's just like before, I'm using whatever method I have. This time I had my table saw fence to help me line these up. Just use my fingers on the sides, use the table saw for the front, and uh, that helps make it a nice Square lamination, and again, pin nails temporarily until I get them into the clamps. Use plenty of glue and always wipe it off. Here I'm just going ahead and sanding off any glue squeeze out I had from my clamp up and uh, it makes it a lot easier than after you already glued together your bridle joints here. I'm using glue on both sides and uh, just slide it in nice and even. I know it's going to fit perfectly because of the spacer I used during uh, the lamination. And if these fight you a little bit, put them in a clamp, uh, but I'm just going to pin nail uh, that joint together once I get a nice square. A little tap here and there. A few pins on both sides and on to the next one. We're about to begin on assembling the angle bracket to the foot pad here. What I'm doing here is I'm uh, using a Forstner bit to drill down just a little bit uh, so that the head of the fasteners I'm going to use are below the surface of the wood. This will hit, help with fitment issues. Uh, in this case, the casters going on them. I also pre-drilled those and use my impact drill. A second person hiller would really help, um, but do what you can. Then I use a little screw here near the uh, angle. And here I mark the middle of the frame assembly and then uh, the two upper supports. I uh, put a piece of three quarter inch plywood in between them as a spacer. And that way you can drill in your, uh, your pipe flange. 
Then here I'm just marking the center and this will allow me to drill my lag screws through and uh, have them evenly spaced throughout. Again, I'm countersinking with the Forstner bit here, then I'll pre-drill and drive in the lag screws. I measured the drill bit at five and a half inches there, just so I know not to go too far. These long lag screws are surprisingly easy and uh, effortless to drill in. They really grab and just pull their way through. You don't need anything super heavy duty to get these things driven through. I would, would recommend an impact drill though.